I always like to start by talking about <clears throat> what are the common challenges in physical security? And this is one of my favorite graphics to put on this particular slide because from the very entry into the, into the physical security market, I, I saw this as being a, pre a prevalent action. When something goes wrong in a physical security network, it's always one of seven things typically that you're going to see. Artifacting in the video, latent PTZ control, loss of video or gaps in video, loss of live view, system instability, database corruption, or total systematic failure. <clears throat> and all of those can potentially be networking related. But the reason I always touch on this slide is this is what the average integrator and or end user commonly gets. When I see that I have a particular vendor's camera and I'm getting artifact, you know, I'm getting tearing in the screen, you might call that particular IP camera vendor or you might reach out to the VMS vendor. Either way, when something can't be replicated in the lab, the first thing they do is tell you it's your network. And unfortunately, it often leaves you without a leg to stand on if you're not that expert that understands how to do a deep dive and actually derive some of those concepts and, and isolate and figure out where things are and drive resolution. So given that, while I, I spent time at Avaya uh, running their network program, we actually worked with an independent research firm because I wanted to get a grasp of where the common issues were, not from the perspective of what I knew, but what are the average user reporting? What are they talking about? What kind of, of issues are they encountering? And so in this particular report, <clears throat> we saw 33% of users talked about pulling up delays or delays in pulling up video footage. And while this may not seem like it's a huge issue, delays in calling up video footage or delays in accessing video in some instances can actually be the worst thing that can possibly happen. I was at a, a symposium where we're in, in New York where there was NYPD, Port Authority, a bunch of local schools, and we're all talking about cybersecurity initiatives and we're talking about safe schools for the most part. Um, and one of the things that really stuck with me was uh, the police commissioner got up and, and, and talked about in an active shooting environment in a school, seconds equals lives. And I started thinking about all the different VMS platforms I've worked with and where I've dragged in a four by four or 16 cameras, and in some cases waited 30, 40 seconds for the video to populate. In an adequately built network and an adequately built video surveillance system, that should absolutely never happen. When you have those things happen, you can actually build these to build what I call a zero delay response. And about 95% of what needs to be done is on the network side to solve that particular problem. And I'll show you an example in a minute. 22% of the overall users reported VMS or camera issues. And I would tell you that that number is skewed. And there's a, there's a reason why I say that's a skewed number. Whenever you look at a problem in a, in a you know, VMS platform, whether it be artifacting, latent PTZ control, loss of video, all the things that we just talked about, you typically either place your call into the VMS vendor or the IP camera vendor. Nine out of 10 times, if it can't be resolved quickly, it's underlying network infrastructure resource restriction that's manifesting that problem. So while 22% of the time you may be placing that call into the vendor for VMS or camera, it may in fact be the infrastructure underneath it. 7% of people talk about video lapses or lapses in video. And there was a casino in Atlantic City that I got called out to that had a lapse in a video that was 100% mission critical at one point. There was a murder that had occurred, started as a carjacking that was supposed to be caught on video. But due to a pathway or spanning tree convergence in the network, that particular archiver went offline for upwards of a minute and a half and missed that particular footage. So when you talk about lapses in video footage, that can be a very big problem. While the network may recover very quickly, it may take up to a minute and a half for those services to restart and those camera feeds to start recording again. You can build systems in such a way and networks in such a way that you never encounter those issues. 19% of people recorded that they had blurry or artifacted video. And where I, I find this one comical is of those 19%, at least 10% of them need to just clean their lens or clean their dome. Has nothing to do with the network. For the rest of them, typically it's some type of resource restriction, whether that be in the IP camera, whether that be in the network, the uplink, the switch or the decoding point, 
all of those can manifest blurry video or video that actually has artifacts associated with it.